Wow. Let's go ahead and let everyone know this is live. I'll do this on my computer. My channel. Go and do this thing. There no sound. I'm muted. No, I'm not muted. Oh, I muted my computer. Yeah, well done, Bill. All right. That looks good. Let's do that. Let's share this. Copy. Face it, book. I need to slide over. Did. Oops. Get the chat room loaded up over here. Highly technical. Click on that. And view all comments. All right. Hello, this is Sean Michaels 360. Hopefully, well, let's get my super awesome music going on here. All right. Hello, Brian Duff. Block my layers, huh? Uh, let's move this thing out of the way. Laptop over. All right. Oh, look, everything looks, whoa, everything looks good. You can see me, and you can see what I'm drawing, and hopefully, hopefully you can hear me, too. All right. Kind of guessing on what's going on there. So if anyone has any questions about whatever the crap it is I'm doing, just let me know. I will do my best to look over at the chat from time to time. Uh, great, thank you, Brian. Hello, Douglas. 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 
Any uh, Homestar Runner fans out there? Pretty amazing how much of this is actually just sort of guesswork. What's important though is that from this guesswork I can make some pretty good sort of estimates about the final piece. Pretty accurate estimates, I should say. Yes, blueprinting. Oh, let's do this. Group that. Paste, paste, paste. And then I can use some alignment. Let's see, this guy should be like that. It should all already be topped out, but let's hit that and then ding, distribute. There we go. Save. Always save frequently. Swatch is on the bottom. What? Is that just a question of uh, Lightroom versus some other program? Oh, program. This, this program is Inkscape. Uh, I like it because it's free and it is super functional. Um, as opposed to something like uh, like GIMP, which is also free, but also kind of sucks. It's not what you would consider like a one-to-one -one, uh, corollary, like the way that Inkscape is to uh, Adobe um, uh, Illustrator. <coughs> I grew up doing tons and tons of stuff on Photoshop, so I'm very used to that, um, the way that application deals with stuff. So any sort of change is bad. What is going on here? I spent a lot of my time just sort of figuring out what's going on between different reference images. I don't... Yeah. Hmm. See, this part of the magazine looks different than whatever's going on in here. Oh, wow. Wall of text. Hello, Harrison. No, I'm probably not going to be molding this. It's a one-off for somebody, and it's really, really gigantic. Um, and I've kind of molded out lately. <laughs> April says, impress me. April's learning about vector designs, too. April's a super cool artist. Let's see. People saying this is frustrating step, that this is the... Uh, that, that this part requires patience. Yes. The extra effort put into drawing your blueprints uh, definitely uh, becomes apparent later on when you're trying to figure out what the hell it all means. What's going on with this thing here? Sometimes too I'll simpli simplify uh, parts of the design or alter them just a teeny little bit because I know that it might save me some time later on when I'm actually building it. So like this, I'll just bump this up here so that this whole bottom part can be done in one step when I'm building it. Um, a lot of this is just kind of like interpretation of what their design was anyway. 
because this this drawing, I'm not even sure. Like I got this from a Google image search. I'm not even sure if this is an official design from Bungie or not, or from Three Four Three. Uh, yes, don't forget your BlizzCon tickets. I am 4,200, number 4,200 in the queue right now for my BlizzCon tickets, and there are 58% of them left, so it's not looking good. I don't think I'm going to get, I don't think I'm going to get BlizzCon tickets. It sucks. Um, we'll program again, this is Inkscape. Just look up Inkscape, it's free. This is the Halo 4 sniper rifle. Um, let's see. Yeah, not Reach. This is definitely Halo 4. Saving is not for sissies. Saving is for people who don't like to redo their work more than once. Um, no, Photoshop is not the best for this kind of drawing because you want to draw... Well, you could technically draw in vectors in Photoshop. I just don't like doing it. Um, uh, when you usually in Photoshop, when you draw something, it comes out as a raster image, and it cannot be scaled. And I like to scale things. Dink, dink, dink. Whoops. I'm having a hard time I'm having a hard time keeping up with the chat. You guys are super chatty today. Hey, Doppelganger, my twin brothers in the chat. Hey. Oh, Harrison wants to trade a needler castings for this gun. Yeah, you know what? I molded that um that Kerrigan rifle, and it was really, really emotional for me, and uh, I don't really want to go through that right now. I have, the problem is that I have, I have a, a bunch of one-off projects coming up this summer that, I'm, it's like, I listed them out, I was like, I'm not going to have free time. So even if I had time to do cast, or even if there was a demand for castings, I, I simply would not have time to do them, which sucks. But... I also will be spending my time making a bunch of really awesome stuff, so I can't complain too much. <sighs> All right. A lot of this, these steps too are really very much just me tracing. Um, sometimes I'll just trace pieces out and kind of interpret them later uh, when I have to. Dragon, yeah, I have a lot of stuff for Dragon Con. Oh, hi, Bill. It's Bill Meeks. Um, how you mold it? I would. If I was going to mold this, I would design it differently. I would probably do it in pieces. Um, this one I'm designing so that there will be a cutoff at the front barrel here so that the front barrel can be unscrewed for transportation because then I'm hacking off like a foot and a half. Let's see, that is uh, 12 inches, yeah, a foot. I'll be able to unscrew this front and put it on the bottom. And the, the scope will probably come off too. But other than that, it's all going to be mostly one solid piece. If I was going to mold it, I would probably mold the barrel in two pieces, the body, maybe the magazine separately, the scope separately, um, maybe the stock dip separately. I don't know. It, if I was going to mold it, I would be doing things a lot differently. But I'm not, so forget it. Let's. Uh, that's kind of an exterior thing. Let's do this. Mm -hmm. 
Why am I not zoomed all the way in? Mm -mm -mm. You guys notice I have some super awesome classic music going on in the background? A little buck. How much would it cost in silicone to mold this? Well, I can tell you that the Kerrigan rifle was about $400 worth of silicone. So this will be similar to that. Link Striper is asking how I would mold it. I mean, I was saying before I would I would do it in separate pieces. I would have to do two part molds for most of it. I would have to clay it up. Um, I don't really have a super comprehensive molding tutorial yet, but it's. I mean, if you look up mold making on the old YouTube, you'll you'll find some stuff there. In fact, Matt Munson has a really good tutorial on the Project Workbench uh, page. YouTube channel that he does. If you look up the the Arkham City grapple gun that he did, I, um, what is this? Oh, I see. This whole back part, this whole rear part is thinner. Uh, it's hard to tell. It's hard to tell when I'm sort of like, and then like, uh, cancel, save. Um, when I'm basically parsing pixels here to figure out what the hell's going on on this thing. Oh. I see. There's just like a ledge there. Alright, I'm going to do this differently. Yeah, let's, let's draw this differently. Does that go all the way back? It mostly does. Let's delete that. Yeah, let's do this. Ideas. I have ideas. Mostly I have to keep in mind that what I'm drawing right now is uh, instructions for myself later. So it needs to make sense in that context. Which is important. Um, so that, I mean, there's no right or wrong way to do it so long as I'm creating something that uh, makes sense to future Bill. Because future Bill is going to look at this drawing and say things like, Pass Bill, what the hell are you thinking? <laughs> what does all of this mean? All of these lines and stuff that you added. This looks like there's like a lip or something. Ah. So this, these lines here, I'm not really sure what they're for, so I'm going to not draw them. These look like something I should probably draw. You can see how I'm, I'm going a little bit off the, the actual drawing that I'm tracing and trying to m closer match this drawing of the, the model that I have. Uh, how do you plug the pieces together when you mold it separately? Oh, if I have different pieces, usually, well, if you have a dagger, so for example, my Keening dagger, I put a threaded steel rod through the handle and up into the hilt, and then I epoxy it. Um, that way, uh, it's nice and sturdy, and it's relying on more than just glue to hold it together. Usually, most of my stuff, like um, for the, the Mass Effect pistols I've done, I'll just do something like um, something like epoxy to hold them together, uh, and that's really all I need. Uh, if you have bigger things like the um, N7 Valkyrie kit that I got from Vulpen Props. For that one, I um, I used uh, aluminum rods. I'll put aluminum rods into different pieces to uh, 
and epoxy to make sure that they're nice and secured. So that way you have both a physical and a uh, physical and chemical bond. How much would it cost to make the battle rifle? The sort of going rate on things like rifles, uh, especially something, I mean, it, the scale and the um, detail level are really what determine the pricing on that. I've seen things like that go for, uh, that's not, oh shit, these are all one. Um, I think that two. A little bit. I've seen something like the battle rifle go for as little as let's say eight hundred dollars, and as much as let's say two thousand dollars plus. It depend. It really depends on on a lot of factors. Four hundred USD, really? No. Oh, Brian. Yes, I am. In fact, recording this. I'll uh, I'll chime in on that. Um, real quick here. Thank you everybody for being so patient. Update on my BlizzCon tickets. I am in position 2,377. There are 23% of the stock left. It does not look good. <laughs> All right. Back to the thing. All right. So that now, now that I've drawn the that piece there, I'll go in and and hide the hide it. I'll look at it really small. I'll zoom in, and then I basically have to tell myself when I look back and forth between the original and the the drawing, if there's enough information there for me to build that piece. And I think I think it's good. I do kind of understand. There is a kind of a lip here. Maybe I'll maybe I'll draw that in. Whoops. All right. Do a lot of copying and pasting of pieces. That way, I know that they uh, they're at the same position and everything. There we go. That's so pretty. All right, let's turn our reference image on and focus on some other pieces. Doop 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 doop. Save. I'm constantly hitting Control S, Control S, saving. 17% of tickets left. It does not look good for the Homestar Runner. All right. Let's see. This is just sort of like a raised bit there. can do some drawing here. Oh. Oh. There we go. I always leave my reference image layer locked because it's easy to accidentally click on it and drag it when you're trying to move something. Um... But that means that sometimes I'll actually have that layer selected and I will try and draw on it and nothing will happen. I use these align and distribute tools all the time to make sure things are lined up and, well, distributed the way you would want them to be. I also use, I hit control a lot. I'll drag out a corner like that and hit control and it will square those off for me. Dink. Dink. There we go. We have a nice rounded off piece like that. It looks like this is raised a little bit, so I'll go and copy and paste one right on top of it, and then I will do this. Dink. Dink. Just like so, and like so. And that tells future Bill that that's like a, a raised up piece. It's with a very slight bevel to it. I may not have it beveled in the future, but at least I'll know. Uh, I'll have the gist of what's going on on that piece. Mm -mm -mm. 
Tink. See what else we have going on. Looks pretty cool. Without the barrel, it does kind of look like a shotgun, which I do think looks pretty neat. I will... Um, let's see, is that... Yeah, it's pretty squared off. I will have... I, I'm planning on having the, the barrel be able to... Most of it be able to unscrew. Um, which will be cool. For transport. Uh, Nerf... Nefarious is asking if I have a thing for futuristic rifles, and uh, I get questions like this a lot, where people say, "Like, hey, what do you what are you looking to build next? Or you should build this certain thing." Um, I work on a commission base. Uh, people come to me with something that they want built, and I build the thing that they want. So it's not necessarily that I like building space rifles. Uh, it's and. I do, uh, but it's not it's not a preference. It's uh it's what people it's what other people's preference is. It's what people want me to build for them. So someone wants a space rifle built, psh, I'll I'll do it, man. I love me some space rifles and I love me some space guns. I do like to show off my guns. Uh, I'm actually Oh, items in my cart have sold out. BlizzCon tickets. Take two is a failure. That sucks. If I could build anything, what would I build? Um, I've said this before. One of my dream projects is to do... Um, uh, what's his face? Is, uh, Corbin Dallas's apartment from the fifth element, because I think that's just the coolest thing ever. Kind of guessing on this part here. Let's do. Uh, I do a lot of holding down of control so that I have my lines nice and snapped sharp. Like that, like that. This line is going crazy. Um, yeah, I have to be careful about me showing off my guns because I hurt my back somehow. Archie Whitehead is building a new Iron Man helmet. That's so awesome. I watched Iron Man 2 last night. Gundam? Uh, I've never been into Gundam. I don't know. Giant Max never really did it for me. So this part right here, there are these hose wire thingies, uh, and I'm ignoring them for now. Uh, I'm just sort of drawing through them. It looks like, so I'm going to have like uh, whoops. What the, what the what? It looks like I'm going to have wherever they're going to plug in will be right around here. So I'll just sort of lay that down as a reference and then just draw around it. Looks like there's like this H-shaped sort of thing going on here. Apparently I've forgotten how to draw straight lines, but that's what these are for, like that. And then because that piece is going to be the same, I paste it in place, and then I do a horizontal flip. Whoops. There we go. Like that. Hmm. I'm looking like... Well, let's, let's try that again. It should be a little bit like that. <laughs> Uh, there we go. That looks better. And again, this will be where those these hoses sort of plug in. So the circles don't necessarily need to be to scale. I'll just um, I will just draw draw them in there for reference. Like this is where the circle things go. So whatever solution I end up, oops, 
whatever solution I end up going with uh, for that will be will fit in that that space. Um, for the, for the wire thing like that, I want to use something that's uh, that I don't make from scratch. There we go. Let's see what's going on in the chat. Um, yeah, the gun rack in Corbin Dallas's apartment would be really cool, just full of the guns. Um, I should build an Iron Man suit. Ah, oh, trust me, whenever I go and watch Iron Man, I'm like, well, now I need to build one of those. The last time I watched The Avengers, I stayed up very late looking up its images. Let me see if I can find those real quick. Uh, Iron Man. The Mark VI, yeah. Oh, I found, found this. So if I built one, that, that that would be the one that I went with. But is that what I got? Yeah, that's all I got. This is, by the way, this is my folder of reference images of things that I've made and things that I want to make. This is a lot of stuff. <laughs> Whenever I see something that I really and I and I don't just have the Halo Four sniper rifle. I have the Reach sniper rifle, and I have the battle rifle. I've got you know. Just reference images of things that I'm probably going to maybe make or want to make. I'm not short on ideas, I'll tell you that much. Duff Tube is, Duff Tube is making robot noises. That's nice. Theo Cleus, how do I decide which commissions to take uh, on next? Is it first come, first serve, or whatever? Um, it's... There are a lot of factors when it comes to picking commissions. Um, a pretty heavy factor is whether or not it's something I want to do. I get a lot of people who um, want me to build something, let's say, that I've already done before. So people will be like, hey, you built uh, that, that uh, I don't know why they sound like George Lucas, but they'll say something like, you built that that Warglaive from, from uh, World of Warcraft. I want one. I'm like, uh, I don't really want to make one. I already made one. I'm not, not really feeling that. Um, what I like to do, especially since I have like blueprints and and stuff, is give people the opportunity to do that for themselves uh, or help them out. If, if someone just has this thing that they really want, I can help them make it or at least give them advice or at least put them on the right path to building something like that. Um, but uh, picking commissions a lot of times is based on whether or not the person who is approaching me for the commission is willing to pony up the cash that is required because it is extremely expensive for me to, uh, to make this stuff, uh, both a time commitment and uh, materials. So that usually, if if I end up not taking a commission, it's because uh, they weren't. We could not agree on a price. Let's say to put it nicely. <sighs> what else do we have here? Please make the video of your face larger. It is beautiful, and I wish to see it better. Thank you, thank you, Everett. I can do that. I think I can do that live. Oh my God! Is this better? Is this better, Everett? Is that okay? All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna fix that. Actually, let's let's not do that. All right. I just got XSplit working barely, so um, pretty happy about that. <laughs> so this is the mount, I guess, for the sniper rifle. Um, I'll end up. I'll end up uh, putting mounting holes in that, I think, for the... The, the thing is, the, the scope is really wide, and I'm worried about this thing tra being transported. See how, how wide this thing sticks out um, from the body? If I could take that off and lay it flat when it's being transported, that would be, I'd be a happy dude. Um, because the rest of the gun is pretty thin. The barrel is about an inch thick, and the rest of the gun is at most like inch and a half, maybe two inches. 
But this barrel is like, or this scope is like four or five inches wide. So if I could take that off and lay it flat because it's much less tall, that would be awesome. So that's why I'm, I'm going to draw the scope separately. How much do my commissions usually run for? And people ask me this all the time. Uh, the, the price range is, I can't nail it down. People want to know, like, what are my rates? Uh, every single project is completely different. Every single one is from scratch. Every single one is a new thing. I'm building a prototype each time. So, and most of that depends on things like size and scale. Um, I mean, size and detail level. There we go. So I can't, I can't give a figure like a, a, a usual price estimate because I've done like big things and little things and all kinds of things. Doop, doop, doop. And I also don't like to talk about the price of something I'm working on because this is a commission for a client and I don't know if they want me discussing the price. So I won't. <laughs> All right. So I don't actually have to be careful about the placement of these because I, I know tricks. Let's line up the last one. Pretty good. Work smarter, not harder. Select all of them, bump them up, and distribute them evenly. Uh, that didn't work as well as I hoped. Oh, you know what? This last one is... Oh, why is that one different? So I thought I made these all identical. Oh, no. Oh, you know what? The first one is shorter. No, it isn't. All right. I don't know what I did here. <sighs> All right. Make that a little bit bigger. These pieces here, anyway, I'll probably make one of them and cast it, like do a push casting and just plop them all on there. Um, so drawing them is kind of redundant, but if, I'm, if I don't draw them, then it'll look weird. Mm, 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 mm. Yeah, why is this one bigger? Why is this one bigger? I thought I made these all identical. All right. Future Bill is kind of upset about. I drew this part yesterday and I don't remember what I was thinking. So I'll just have to go do them all manually. Mm -mm -mm. You know, I was drinking yesterday. May have had a may have played a role. See that this one's wider. I don't know what I did. All right, what's going on? What's going on in the chat? You gonna watch Iron Man three? Yes, I am. Pretty stoked about Iron Man three. Mm -mm -mm. Glad you guys get to watch me make uh, goofy faces while I do this thing. Cause usually I'm just doing it by myself. Oops, dink. Uh, time to break out the digital leveling tool. Mm -mm -mm. Deep, deep, deep. Oops. When did I start this? How long has this been going? It's 10.42 right now. All right. Deleted. There, there, there's those things, that top rail thing. So I drew these right over this bar thing, this whatever this freaking thing is supposed to be. 
this will just get added on later. Uh, I'll, I'll get like some, maybe like three eighth or quarter inch uh, aluminum rod and use my bending tool. Like, how long does this say it is? It is 0.22, so that's about about a quarter inch uh, on that guy right there. See the the here's the problem. This freaking this reference image. I what's weird is I couldn't find very many reference images of this gun. Which is a pain in my ass, but uh, but this this scope is just casting a huge shadow on these pieces. So I'm kind of kind of guessing on on these parts here. A little, little bit of guesswork going on. All right, I do know that these are kind of indented, so we'll do that. They're sort of beveled in. What program am I using? Again, this is Inkscape. Inkscape, man. And it is free, and it's awesome. Uh, if, you're, if you're drawing vectors to do something like laser cut stuff, you can use this. Um, well, that's, not, that's not quite right. You can use this for um, drawing all kinds of stuff. And it is... Very similar to things like Corel Draw or um, uh, Adobe Illustrator, anything like that. Anything. The concept, the concept of drawing in vectors is what's important, and uh, they translate very, very well between software packages. So don't don't fret if you only know one or the other, because you'll you can be up and running um, in no time. Carcary Camus? Sorry, I can't pronounce your name. Woke up at 2 a.m. to watch me work on stuff. Where is it 2 a.m.? Certainly not here in these old United States. Uh, let's do two. What have I done? Copy that, paste that. I do different line weights to sort of tell myself that this is a bevel. I don't know. I don't, I don't. There's no real rhyme or reason to it. It just makes it's it's how I. Again, this is. I'm basically laying out a a, a list of instructions for myself for later on. Uh, so long as it makes sense to me is what's important. Um, it would be different if I was. Um, doing this to uh, drawing a blueprint to give to someone else, I would have to worry about whether or not. Oh, why is this one got to be shorter? Why can't they be the same? Uh, I'm going to make an executive decision and say that they are the same. Uh, if I was drawing blueprints for someone else, I would have to be a lot more uh, thoughtful, I guess. <laughs> About about how I'm doing it, I would have to add. I would I would be adding things like um, dimensions and everything, but undo, copy that, paste that in place. There we go. I'll do to to preserve this angle. I'll do that and that. And there's something here. There's a line here. Whoops. And I just noticed that this guy's peeking out there. Now I, I do like I do sell my blueprints to other people so that they can, you know, try and make it themselves. But it's that is very much a uh, this is what I used. Good luck. <laughs> But I do what I do is if people have one of my blueprints and they don't really understand it, I'll be like, hey, let me know. I'll talk, I'll talk you through it. All right, let's see how that part looks there. 
Uh, the other thing about this gun is I may or may not be doing a top. I'll probably do a top view of the scope and maybe the barrel piece, but I'm not going to do top front side views of this whole thing. Uh, partially because I'm under a pretty big time crunch on this one. Uh, it's got to be done in a, in a few weeks. So I'll, what I'll do is <laughs> get this done as fast as possible. Let's see. Yes, April, you heard lasers. Oh, hi, Jamie. Drunk Kids Gaming, there's a... I know who that is. That's... Uh, Curly, there we go. Sorry, sorry, Curly. Yes, I'm trying trying out XSplit uh, because there's a, an overlay. You can tell that I'm doing it for free, but uh, yeah, giving it giving it a go so you guys can see my smiling face. Sharks with lasers, yeah. All right. So this thing has this little tail sticking off of it, and what I'm going to do, what I'm going to try and do at least, is draw it beforehand, then I'll rotate it. Um, I'll start by um, centering these two circles, and then I can split them like this, like that. And then I can use this circle tool to Start, let's see, it would be 180 and 0, like that. And then the opposite for this, 0 and 180. No, no, that's not right at all. Do my little Pac-Man thing here. We'll get. We'll just get this close for now. Dink, dink. Um, the tricky part is I can't just attach those because... The way the way this works is really weird. How did I do this before? I think I combined it. I think what I did was um, path union. And then I open that up and then I combine those. No. No, it doesn't want to work. Why don't you want to work? Because this is no longer a circle object here. Ah. Maybe it was not combined. Maybe it was union object. Ah. Union. Open that up. Let's see if these guys want to become one. No, they don't. Um. <laughs> you guys get to watch me fumble and try and figure out how I did this before. Basically, I want these to both be the same object, but they don't want to be the same object. Because this one was like a circle before. And the other one was not. Mm. One thing I can do is just redraw the whole thing. Uh, let's do this. No, why? Oh, I know what I did. There we go. All right. This is so I know where my circle points should go, kind of, like that. All right. We can do this. We can go like this, like that, like that, and then like this, up, across, down, and close. All right. New plan. Make that look like that. Alright. Round those out. Round those out. That goes straight down like that. 
Actually, these can be like this. Good old fashioned busier curves. This is kind of oblonged a little bit. A little bit, a little kind of chubby. Again, I'm I'm drawing a uh, set of instructions for myself for later. This piece I will you I will cut out. Oh god, that's that's hideous. Uh. Where are my curve handles? There we go. Let's do that again, like that, like that. Now I have a little extra control. I can send that out at a 90 degree angle, and that should help. This is kind of hideous, but we're getting there. It's a little, little tall. Let's do this. Look at that. Look at that. It's adorable. Why isn't my chat refreshing? I apologize if I'm not responding in the chat, but the YouTube chat likes to update once every uh, three quarters of an hour. And... All right. There we go. Let's do actually rotate this guy down. Like that. Center all these guys or distribute them. There we go. Mm -mm -mm. So when I went and these are a little bit not perfect looking, um, but instead of wasting time right now drawing them to look perfect, I know that later on I'll be able to figure out what that shape is and I'll just be able to make it. Oh, look, my chat finally refreshed. Hello, Nathan. Nathan Emerson. Uh... Shift J. Well, no, I tried the join tool wasn't working. I did I did try that, but for some reason. Uh, see, this is what confuses me. This line right here. Let's let's do this. Oops. This line seems to terminate behind these wires, so I don't really know what's going on there. And my reference image is in a complete shadow, so I have no earthly idea what's going on there so what I need to do is just guess um, I will do this I will go like that and it looks like this is like a rounded bevel going up like that so I'll just add another line to sort of describe that to myself like so. Think. You see, my mostly most of my method is laying down a bunch of lines and then, um, and then going in and modifying them, and cleaning them up. It's sort of a quick and dirty way to get as much information down on paper as possible. And I'm constantly just thinking, like, how how am I going to use this later? How is it going to help me out? Uh, when I'm trying to build this thing, there we go. It's looking pretty good. And reusing reusing things that you've got is super helpful. This is 
this circle inside of a circle sort of thing that I've got is kind of my um, stand in for what I know will later be just like a drilled hole. And there it goes like that. Because uh, on the reference, a lot of these look like just this sort of slight indent on the hole. Actually, this one here is not. This one's kind of kind of raised. So I'll do this. They'll tell me that later on that there is just kind of, I can even do like, have that describe that this is a, an indented thing with a raised thing. <laughs> you know, an indented thing with a raised thing. What's going on chat room? Well, why is it, why don't you refresh? <laughs> What's, uh, what's everyone else working on today? Did anyone have some cool projects? I know someone said they were doing a um, an Iron Man helmet. Sounds totally awesome. Let's see, this kind of goes... I think this kind of splits... that. Dink, dink, dink. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Again, I'm just really parsing pixels here, trying to figure out where everything goes based on a bunch of very large pixels. Mostly, um, these things will be printed out um, uh, full size, and then I'll use them as templates to cut things out. What's on here? Oh. All right. Deep, 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 deep. Oh. Some indented sort of doodads there. This whole this whole piece right here looks like it's. It's a higher level than everything else. It's sort of raised up. And that, let's do, let's do this. Come on. There you go. There you go. Delete that. And then draw this piece. I'm trying to keep this, like, the way it is, you know, what way it is. So that this whole this whole part right here kind of rests on top of everything else. So what I'll do is cut this out there. Uh, oops, I missed. Um, my chat room's Freaking comment thing still hasn't updated. How about it, YouTube? So now these pieces can go over just a little bit. Kind of, it tells me later on that the that this part right here is on top of the rest of them. See how there's a sort of overlap. And then there's this sort of lip part that goes around it. With some line thingies on it. These look like, well, I don't really see those in the, in the reference. I'm not going to draw them then. Doop. Uh, 
There we go. Oh, we got I got a wall of text from the chat. It finally updated. All right. Rob says he's doing the Mark 42 helmet from Iron Man. Uh, Drunk Kids Gaming is playing with Unity. It's a video game engine. That's pretty cool. Uh, Jamie is toughing it out at, through a hangover. Uh, Jamie, you guys are doing what would you would you call it? Um, pin. Um, it was like a pinball. Crawl. Pin crawl, right? That sounds right. Little doodad there. These two things are whatever the crap those are. Are uh, some sort of screw thing. Lamb is making the full Mark 7 for the midnight showing of Iron Man 3. Wow. That's pretty uh that's pretty ambitious. Uh Lester is working on a dominator gun. Awesome. Let's do This is my stock circle thing. Make it a little bit bigger. When you scale stuff in Inkscape, it changes the line weight, so you gotta go back in and fix it. You can use like the circle tool to scale it without doing that, but you can't do two things at once like that. So FYI, that's why I do that. Mm -hmm. Think, think. A lot of this is me just adjusting busier curves. Center these guys like that. And then this part gets Copied and paste. I do paste and in place a lot when I'm drawing when I'm drawing vectors. I paste something right on top of itself, and then just sort of edit or move it. This all needs to be higher. Yeah. Ah, uh, just like that. Let's do this again. Center everything again. That's pretty, pretty good. I can do better. And then there's like a sort of lip around it. This is something I've been, something kind of newer that I've been doing, adding a little more of a description for myself. Adding just a teeny bit of a lip. So I kind of know there's an indent there. And it looks like this goes over the top part. So what I'll do is on this line, I'll do like this. And just raise this up a teeny bit like that, just so I kind of know when I go back, that's going to be like that. Copy this thing, paste it on top of itself, and then I shift it over holding control to keep it leveled. And go in again like this. And raise that up a little bit more. And there's those goofy things. There. Um, and then when I'm making this, I'll use these drawings as templates, but I'll I'll also keep looking back at my reference images so I kind of have a better idea of how it looks in three-dimensional space. Let's see, what's going on in the chat room? Uh, was that a Peter Griffin impression? Yes. Yes, it was. Thank you. Um, 
Nathan is asking whether or not I do anything in the blueprint to differentiate the layers. Uh, usually, no. It's kind of a a lot of back and forth when I'm when I'm actually cutting the pieces out. Um, <laughs> I wish I had a more uh, technical justification for everything that I do, <laughs> but I don't. <laughs> I really don't. Uh, yeah, this is kind of the um, the the artist in me. I mean, it's, it's kind of a constant battle. It's the uh, the technical designer in me is in a constant struggle with the sort of freehand artist in me. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Oftentimes, the, the, the freehand artist just says, Oh, you'll figure it out later. Guess so. Let's thin that down a little bit. Sometimes people ask me questions like, "Hey, why do you do that like that?" And I and I don't have a reason for it. Sometimes it's just because it's how I've always done it, or because I saw someone else do it and I just copied them. Right. Oh, pin crawl, yes. Will this be? Yes, this is all being recorded, and I'll put it up on my YouTube channel once it's done. Okay. Archie says he just. I'm guessing Archie is a he. Finished building the Mark Seven. Um. That's Iron Man, and asks how long an average how long does uh, on average does it take to make a complete blueprint for something of that size? Um, I can tell you so far on this one, I've put in about three hours for that much work. Um, for my um, Kerrigan rifle, that was like I want to say. Oh, I forgot to do this. My Kerrigan rifle was like eight hours? No, it was more than that. It was like 10 or 12 hours of drawing for that. But that one was, I did, a, I did a, an exploded view. I did a top side view. That one was probably more detailed than this one's going to end up being. So, you know, for something super detailed, a day and a half worth of drawing is, is not uncommon. Um, and if I was doing like super detailed technical blueprints with like a CAD program, it would be I could spend a week designing something like this easily a week. Um, but I'm not. I'm drawing basically outlines for a blueprint. This is this is not what would be considered a professional design document for a like a functional piece. This is purely aesthetic. So I get I get away with a lot of stuff because of that. This music is rad. Uh, really, really hard. These look like they're extruded nubbins. I think I'll call them that. Yeah, this this uh, live stream will be recorded. Uh, it's being recorded right now, and it will be live on my YouTube channel later on for viewing pleasure. Um. Uh, uh, uh. So these look like some sort of grippy thing, you know, a grippy thing. So it looks like they will be extruded from the bottom a little bit, so I'll do this. And I'll do this. 
Yeah, that looks like where your hand's going to be if you're holding this thing. So there's these guys here. One, two, a three. And then I have to go in and sort of manually do this. There's a lot of stuff I know in Inkscape or Illustrator or whatever that are a lot more automated. Uh, and again, if I was drawing this in a CAD program, doing things this highly manual way that I do it would be kind of uh, stupid. But this is how I know how to do it, and this has worked for me so far. So I'm not going to change for a while until it stops working for me. I'm sure that some CAD cam operators are looking at me like, what the hell are you doing, you crazy man? I'm like, hey, this works for me. Leave me alone. You have to boss me. Uh, oh, jeez. That's fine. How about it, chat? What's going on with the updates? Does anyone know if there's a way to make YouTube automatic updates actually work more real time? Because this is kind of a pain. All right. There we go. Because I keep getting hit with a wall of text. Yeah. How many people do I have in here? I don't even know. Whoa, there's 20 of you. Hi, everybody. Thank you, everyone, for showing up on a Saturday morning to watch me draw. <laughs> All right. Doop, 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 doop. Listening to some Bach, because I don't know anything about classical music. But I know that Bach is kind of like the standard that most people enjoy, and um, classical music is royalty free, so <laughs> I can play it on my live stream and not worry about the about some pissed off music holder coming and sending me a C and D for playing their music. Pretty sure Johann Sebastian Bach comfortably in his grave and will not fault me for playing his music. What the... This, so this bipod piece right here I'll, I'll build separately, um, but where it overlaps I kind of have to guess where that, where this line, see this line goes around and then terminates behind this piece somewhere and I don't really know how. So we play the guessing game. Oh, I should probably do, let's do this. A lot of times I'll end up drawing, let's say, like a circle piece. Uh, and I have to kind of draw it freehand. So I'll use the circle tool to draw a circle. And then I'll kind of trace it like that. It needs to be just a little bit bigger. Again, a lot of this is highly, highly not technically accurate. But for my purposes, it works. Because I am just sort of drawing a list of instructions for myself. Mm-mm-mm. I'm just trying to get these lines to overlap that circle pretty closely. There. That, for all intents and purposes, will work for me. Now this line up here is an overlapping piece, and I'll draw that later. Excuse me one second. Oh yeah, sorry about that. I have to adjust because my spine feels like it wants to jump out of my back. 
All right. So this overlapping piece here, I'll draw separately. But um, the circle where it goes, I'm going to kind of just draw like a crosshairs where it about, I think, the center of that is. Um, about like that. And it, most of this piece here will be, most of this piece is going to be whatever attaches this part here. Now when I build this, it's not going to fold down. It won't be functional. It'll be attached here, and then I'll put an attachment behind it where it overlaps with the barrel piece there. But I'm going to build it separately. Um, so I need to draw both the circle where, it, where it's going to land, which is what I'll draw right now, and I need to draw later the, um, the part where it, the, the circle part, for the, again, highly technical, <laughs> the circle part on the bipod. Um, but I will probably attach them with some sort of, like, like a quarter inch hole right here. So I can, I think I can make it 0.25. Just sort of tell myself later on, that's, that is a quarter inch hole. Right about there. Again, highly, highly technical. And that's all I need for that, that piece right there. It looks super complicated in detail, but most of that is what's on this, this bipod part there. Let's see. Oh. Curly is, is letting me know that the comment thing is just YouTube being dumb. All right. I'll buy that. Let's see. All right. The chat would be nice. If anyone knows at Google, let them know. Actually, being able to do uh, two individual video inputs on Google Hangout would be awesome. I know that that doesn't exist either. Um, I'm almost done with the body of the barrel here, or the body of the gun, and I think that's where I'm going to end the stream because my back is killing me, and I would I need to go take a break. So if anyone has any questions that they want to get in before I leave in the next five minutes, uh, post it in the chat, and I will be sure to answer it. Doop, 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 doop. Uh, Sharp wants to know if I'm using Illustrator. This is Inkscape, which is very similar to Illustrator. Let's see, this, this thing here, I'm going to just copy and put over here. Both of these are like a loop thing, like a D-ring or something. Um, I'm going to modify the, the outline I have to match it because I'll probably make these two pieces at the same time and just just put one on the front, one on the back. Uh, and again, they will likely not be functional. They will probably not hold the gun up. Uh, what is what is going on here? These are different than the drawing. I've been defaulting to making changes uh, based on, all right, based on the, um, the model rather than the drawing because again, I don't know, <laughs> I don't actually know where this, this drawing came from. But I, it's a perfect 2D side representation of the gun, so I'm, I'm rolling with it. Oops. So I think, I think that this 
this angular jut here is more like this. And it looks like, actually it looks like, kind of comes up here. What? Crying out loud, fingers. Let's do something like that. It's like there's this thing going on here. And this thing going on here. Not really sure. All right, that's that's some weird ass thing there, but I'm gonna roll with it. All right, let's see if there are any more. Looks like a gun. It is a gun. Thank you. Uh, there was a short period of time when the XSplit virtual webcam worked with Google Hangouts, but then it died. Um, you know what, Curly? I had problems with that, but I'm using um, Internet Explorer, and it seems to be working right now. It just wouldn't work with Chrome. Uh, the drawing is from 343. Cool. I'll have to go say hi to those guys. They're up in Redmond. Uh, let's see. Am I missing anything? Looks pretty good. So this is what I've got uh, so far. And this is, I'm doing it in layers, and this is the body layer. And I'm feeling pretty good about that. So the next thing I'll probably draw will be something like the scope or the barrel. Um, and I'll, I'll have the scope, and I'm probably going to do a top front and side of that. The bar thing, whatever that is, will go up there. The barrel assembly will be, I'll, I'll draw that separately in two pieces because the front this front part of the barrel will be uh, a sort of screw-in part, and I'll probably do a top view of the the um, this thing, the muzzle, you know, the muzzle thing on the end because it's not symmetrical. Uh, and then the the bipod where it overlaps, I'll draw that as well. Um, yeah. Anyway, uh, I need to go take a break because my back hurts. But thank you everyone for joining me. I'll just take a look at the chat and see if there are any more questions. Um, Curly, I actually, I could stream to somewhere else, like Justin or whatever, but I actually have an exclusive partnership with Machinima, so I have to do all of my streaming through YouTube, so stuck with that. Muzzle break or compensator. This is the muzzle break or compensator, according to Ben Team. Thank you, Ben. Um, all right, so anyway... Uh, I'll be online. I won't be streaming, but I'll be on Twitter, or I will be on my Facebook page later today uh, when I come back to draw some more. So if anyone has any other questions, you feel free to sort of send me messages there, and I'll do that. So howdy. I'm going to go quit the stream. Thank you for joining me.